order for this evening, please do so. With no comments, uh, we will move to our 7.30 hearing, which is a site plan amendment from Coca-Cola Company to expand trailer storage at 45 Industrial Drive, Northampton Map ID 25A-183, excuse me, 185. Uh, and it looks as if we have one recusal, is that correct? Right. Yes, so Mark Sullivan has recused. Um, is there a presentation from the applicant? Good evening. Thanks for having us. Uh, I'm Mike Schaefer from Huntley Associates. Yeah, I'm David Martinez from Coca-Cola. So we're here today to present uh, the trailer staging yard area, uh, plans of which, uh, documents of which you have received. Let me just put this back so I can take this out. Uh, I just thought we'd just start uh, originally just to kind of give you an overall picture. You should have this in your package that shows the entire Coca-Cola site for the um, and the shaded area that you see in the back, this is the area behind the current plant, between the plant and State Route 91. Okay. Uh, the shaded area is the area that will be affected by the project, uh, which is uh, explained a little more clearly and expanded on the following pages. Two things I wanted to point out is just the location of where it was relative to the plant. Industrial Drive, like, is up on this end. Route 91 is on this end. Uh, we are, there are two other areas just for location purposes <coughs> that are also shown on the other plans. Uh, two areas that we are removing, some bituminous, some leftover bituminous, and also an unused driveway. And we did that primarily to be able to meet some green space requirements, uh, which I documented in your, in, in your notes. So that's just an overview of the overall plant where the project's located, and a couple of the small areas that we're removing some impervious uh, materials. This is the general plan that, uh, again, copies of which you also have that basically shows the existing conditions. This is an area right now, again, that's the, uh, the larger shaded area that I showed you on the larger map. Uh, what we have is basically a large concrete apron with many going around the back of the building and behind the asphalt drive, between the asphalt drive and the perimeter fence that separates the Coke property from the Route 91 right of way uh, is the area uh, in which we are proposing to place 12 uh, trailer uh, staging areas. So that's kind of the existing site. There's some uh, two of the existing detention ponds uh, already there. And I'll talk a little bit about more of those as I go along. But on the other side here, can everybody see that OK? Or okay, on the south side here is the actual proposed improvements. <coughs> so we're proposing uh, 12 uh, spots that are be 12 by 55. Uh, in length for basically just a trailer. Uh, the tractor will back up, will drop the trailer for loading and unloading, uh, and then the tractor will, you know, go elsewhere. So the tra these are purely for, tr uh, for the trailers and not to include the tractors. Uh, this is the normal area here. There's some loading docks. I think it was six to eight loading docks. Six to eight, uh, yeah. Up against the building here uh, where all the loading uh, and unloading takes place uh, in this por portion of the, of the project. What we're proposing, uh, there, this detention pond, which was originally designed under a previous project, was actually over-designed. They had actually designed it in such a way that they had already allocated some additional uh, anticipated impervious area in the future. Not by much. It was pretty small. I think it was like 900 square feet or something like that. We are just under 8,000. So obviously, we need to make some modifications. And what we're do, basically doing is we're keeping the same profile of the existing uh, detention system and we are lowering it because there's an ability to do that. There was something between uh, approximately underneath the foot. So this whole area was able to accommodate the additional uh, detention based on the analysis that was performed and submitted. We're also cleaning out the four bay a little bit, not by much, probably like six inches or some sediment that's in there. We're collecting that and taking that out as well. So there really isn't a whole heck of a lot going on as far as uh, the overall project. The, uh, the pavement will be a little heavy duty pavement with nice thick sub base so that we get a lot of settlement. All the drainage will slope toward the building as it currently is doing. Uh, there is a ditch in the back. Uh, we had that taken a look at. I think I provided Caroline with some documentation relative to you had some concerns about whether there were some wetlands back there. We have a letter from a certified wetland scientist that there is no wetlands back there and that we're clear. There was a wetland along the bike trail. Um, 
of which there was a buffer identified. I've identified the buffer on the plan. Um, that's basically a dimensional buffer. There's actually a physical buffer. You can probably see along in your plan, there's actually a berm that separates uh, the Coke property from the neighboring property as well. So it serves as an additional buffer, if you will. Uh, the plans basically reflect uh, two, we originally had three lights. Uh, we brought it down to two lights. <clears throat> and the reason being is we found out we only needed two lights. Originally we thought we needed three. Uh, mm -hmm. You have in your, in your third drawing, the last page is the actual illumination plan that shows uh, that the lights uh, being provided, which are the same lights that are being provided elsewhere on the property, uh, meet the requirements, the lighting requirements for the code, and there is no uh, lighting, no, no illumination off the property. It's all on the property. Uh, if you're not familiar with the property or what, what happens beyond the fence line, uh, the, the highway is probably, I want to say, 25 to 30 feet from the fence line, maybe a little bit more. There are a lot of trees already in that area. It's heavily vegetated. And the elevation of the road is actually higher than the Coke property by, oh boy, I'm trying to multiply myself. I would say maybe uh, 20 feet or so. It's, it's considerably higher. Uh, but in either case, the lighting is all such that it's all projected uh, over the lot and toward the building. And there's no uh, light pollution uh, off the property. Uh, let's see, what else? We are going to have a little bit of some topping that's going to take place on top of the uh, existing asphalt pavement in order to ensure that we have some proper drainage uh, to meet the contours. Nothing is happening with the concrete section. Obviously, we, got, we want to keep that the same, keep the elevation there. <clears throat> but everything is being sloped. Uh, all the pavement is being sloped toward the current drainage pattern that we have there now. Uh, if, you, if you saw, I'm not sure how interested you are in the analyses that we provided. However, uh, we certainly have met all the requirements of the pre and post. We've actually lowered the elevation by increasing uh, the area just a little bit. We didn't yet need to do a whole heck of a lot, but we wanted to make sure that there was sufficient capacity uh, in the event of the storm event. And I think that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple. Great. So. Great. Technical <clears throat> questions from the board? Tree, there's a note on the plan about tree removal? Yes. So we're, <clears throat> we're trying to be sensitive to the trees. We're trying to limit uh, the removal of only those trees that are immediately affected by the project. We found there's actually a couple of uh, uh, trees that are greater than 20 inches. We've identified one of them. The other one is much further down. Both of them are outside the work limit. We wanted to preserve those, but all the other trees inside that were less than 20. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, again, the note that we have on the plan is we, don't, we want to try to minimize as many trees as possible. All the trees that are there, if you've ever been to the property, I want to say there's probably 10, maybe 15 feet inside from the fence line where there was actually no trees. <clears throat> so all the trees are closer to the existing pavement, the perimeter pavement that goes around, probably the front half. So, if I might, about 15 to 20 trees are going to be removed. Yes, sir. That's slightly right. under. They didn't quite meet that 20-inch criteria, mm -hmm. but they're good mature trees. But they, yeah. so I, I don't know where we stand there. Um, we're going to lose a lot of tree canopy in that area. That uh, yeah. so. Yeah, I mean, I think if we aren't hitting that identified DBH number then we can't require, you know, there's, there's nothing we can require that, you know, be done for tree replacement. I suppose we can, we can suggest or ask that if there is an opportunity <coughs> to revegetate or to add trees to offset some of that loss that we would appreciate that. Um, I can clarify a little bit. The tree replacement for t removal of trees of 20 inches or greater um, means that there's a specific formula that you have to meet to replace those trees. This project is um, in your jurisdiction a site plan review, so you can certainly ask for trees to be relocated in other places or replanted. It's just not um, um, correlated with the formula in the zoning as the trees are that are much bigger that are taken down. Mm -hmm. So it's certainly if you feel that it's appropriate to have um, 
young trees replanted elsewhere or in a place that would help offset the increased asphalt you certainly have that within your purview to to require well, as a condition I would prefer to you to, yeah, make a recommendation Thank I think you. we can. so just to stay on the green space for a minute yeah. the applicant says that there's 20 percent of the property is still green space impervious material right correct so I would I, I would have the board just look at the first seat of the plan um, Twenty percent is what stated is still being green space, and with this, um, Carolyn, our detention basins and are they part of that calculation? Or are they yes, taken out of the calculation. Uh, they are because it's just not it's um, pervious surface. It's pervious surface. Yeah. Okay. So it, it's all it's all asphalt, and I certainly I didn't I didn't walk and I didn't have my measuring tape to do those calculations. But I'm just wondering if over the years that coke has been biased time and time again, perhaps there hasn't been a little slippage, because to my eye, it doesn't look like one fifth of the area no. is green space. I didn't I didn't bring the green map. We actually <clears throat> I don't know if you want to talk about it, but we actually had. Uh, gone back because there was an initial application that was submitted uh, years ago that was actually an incorrect in, uh, <coughs> incorrect calculation. Yeah. So what we did is we ended up ended up the whole we were supposed to be uh, last month or something like that and we postponed it because we went out there to verify and we actually verified everything that was out there to see what we actually had. We originally came we originally were talking about 17 spaces. Right. Then we were talking 14 spaces. 14. The last submission we made was for 14 spaces, and now we're down to 12 to compensate because we went through and we measured everything to make sure. Planning Department actually has a complete, accurate map now in color of all the things that are green and not green. Uh, I've also given a copy to uh, Coca-Cola and said, here, this is it. We're done. There's <laughs> nothing else that you can do at this point. You can't even get the full spaces that you wanted. So if you're going to do anything else, you're going to have to make some compensations with some of the other. I mean, they have other areas that they could make green, uh, but that's not in preview of this project at this point. You know, I'll let them, if that, if they should <coughs> need, have some other needs later on, they can certainly address that with you uh, later. But we asked, one of the reasons we actually got postponed is because we needed to go back out there and verify actually the calculations that were there. So the ones that you have now are accurate. Okay. And so even if it doesn't quite night. look like that on the plan itself, it really is. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, and just to close the loop on trees and some tree replacement, uh, what are folks feeling in terms of our our interest in requesting or requiring that some of the trees that will be cut down be replaced on the site? I like the idea. You like tree, right? No. Would you be? I, I, will, I, will, I will tell you that all, yeah. with all, with all uh, yeah. due respect to what the gentleman was saying, there are definitely some trees that are on the tree. <clears throat> I wouldn't want to say that all of them are 19 inches or 18 inches. There are various stages, right. but there are some trees there that were under the 20. I mean, I think the biggest, the smallest, the largest one I measured that was under 20 was 19. So, but they do range from different things. Mm -hmm. So there are, I would say there, you know, there probably are 15 trees there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would guess that maybe at least half of those, you know, are maybe 15 inches and bigger. Yeah. The other ones are smaller. Right. Would it be feasible and reasonable to, re to find space on the site for seven new trees? Yeah, I, I think that would. I mean, we'd be open to that. We would work with planning and, and try to see what type of trees we need to put in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we would be open to that. That mm -hmm. wouldn't be an issue. That's good. Okay. Where'd you come up with seven? Half the 15 that they're cutting. Okay. I mean, we can make the number go higher if they're open to it, but <laughs> I think that was just sort of a starting point. We, you know, when there is the formulas, you know, that we're going to use for the larger trees is often based on a the proportion of total yeah. inches. So, and, and I would think that once we, we remove those trees and kind of take a look at the area, mm -hmm. we could kind of work and, and try to figure out which locations would be best for them. Okay. I mean, because we still have, what we want to make sure is that we know we have to push snow and we don't want to put the trees in locations so they'll be damaged and right. essentially right. eliminated. Right. And I think if we were to ask or acquire a replacement of 15, that might be burdensome to try to figure out with some of the other site needs that you have yeah, I think so. um, seven seems you know like a potential compromise Good um 
if there aren't any other technical questions from the board, we'll open it up to public comment. If there is anyone here who would like to make a comment about this project, uh, we do ask that you come up to the podium and let us know your name and address. And if there isn't, then we'll have some discussion among the board. We may, we're gonna keep our public hearing open, so we may ask you a question or two if there are any. Sure. Um, just to confirm, uh, it looked like staff did not have, have issues with the application as presented. Right, and DPW had no comments or concerns. Okay, the only other um, issue to raise was that it was related to circulation. So there were some comments uh, from an abutter regarding circulation and you know this is because you are here and we are talking about additional trailers coming in and being parked you know this is a good opportunity to kind of talk through that and see if there are some ways that this problem can be solved it seems as if the primary issue um, has to do with uh, accessing and approaching the facility from the south Correct. so um, i don't know if you have seen this information from an abutter, there there were two suggestions, one of which was the, the sign. Excuse me, ha have they seen that letter? Have we you, have, yes. you have, we have seen it. Okay, um, one of which was that the, the sign that faces south be doubled in size so that it's very clear what the approach needs to be. Um, the other recommendation was asking that if drivers could be instructed that trailers won't be loaded if they are approaching from the south. Uh, that's kind of, it's not a site related intervention. So that may be, you know, that's just sort of a business decision, an operational decision that may be more challenging. But um, it does seem like this is something that, you know, we need to, to address and we need to make sure that this is working in the site that, that we have. What are you thinking, George? Uh, oh, I'm thinking certainly the first mitigation we could kind of monitor and confirm. Right. The second one, a, we real, certainly couldn't, yeah. yeah. Have you done any any studies or observations of yeah. what's happening with that south approach? Yeah, so, so there's a couple of things there. As far as the signage, mm -hmm. um, I think in the past we have offered to, to make that sign bigger. We were told we couldn't. If there's an opportunity to make that sign bigger, we would be glad to do that. So th there's no issue in respect to that. Do you uh, happen to know, and I, we can look this up as well, but do you happen to know the current square footage of the existing sign? Yeah, I have not seen, I, I'm not here local, but <laughs> what my understanding is that it's across, when you take that exit 19 for Bridge Street, mm -hmm. that it's actually across Bridge Street. It's not right there at right. the intersection. It's, it's a little bit further down the intersection. So and it is, from my understanding, it's relatively small. Um, but I think the issue with that is because it's a mass highway. So we can't plant yeah. the, we can't put it on, what would be, that would be the south side of Bird Street. Got it. Yeah. So okay. th that's, is, is we, we would be glad to do something there, but we've been told we couldn't. Um, I understand that um, local management has been working with council member Nash mm -hmm. in, in looking at some options okay. as far as direction, um, not being able to turn right into our property off Correct. of yeah. industrial. Mm -hmm. So we'd be open to that as well. So we're, we do have that conversation okay. open with them. Great. And then as, in regards to the carrier, uh, the drivers are not Coca-Cola employees. They are, we have a contract with the carrier. So they're a third party. Okay. Now we do provide them instruction on how to enter the facility. Mm -hmm. Some of them obviously go up, um, I guess is it, I can't remember the name of the road, but up the thoroughfare and mm -hmm. come back down through the south side, um, directly um, south. Um, but um, you know, as I said, so we can't really control them. We give them direction on it. And then from a GPS standpoint, GPS kind of tells you that direction to go through Day Street. And we know that there's signage there, but we really can't control the mm -hmm. drivers other than reinforcing it. Mm -hmm. But we do think this, these additional um, parking spaces will help with the traffic flow okay. um, that's around the property because right now what happens is that if our docks are occupied there is no place for those right. trucks to come into the property so with those additional spaces trucks are now able to come in drop their trailer pick up another one and leave the site very quickly so you're able to pull trucks off the road mm -hmm. at a much um, higher pace than what you previously were my office uh, has been in that area for years and going through the industrial park you see the tractor trailers stacked up on the roadway yes um 
and I've been stopped there often enough that there's time to think about it. Yeah. It seems to me <laughs> that, as you mentioned, rearranging your entrance so that there's no way to turn in to the right. Yeah, we would that's like one. to. Yeah, and correct. two, your guard gate is actually the, the source of most of the waiting. It's not that there isn't space behind the building. It's the checking in process. Right. That, and you have no stacking distance at all on your property. If the guard shack was moved in one tractor trailer length, yeah, I, I, yeah. that would I, allow the trucks to more often stack up on your property instead of on the public way. You're, you're correct. If we were able to move that in, we would, but it cuts off circulation through a portion of our, our property if we move that um, guard shack inside further. I've thought about it. I'm imagining it stays against the southern boundary. I'm not imagining it being out in the middle of everything. We can definitely take a look at that as well. <clears throat> in terms of process, it sounds like there's already discussion underway on the city council side, and Councilor Nash is on the Transportation and Parking Committee, if I, or if I understand. So is there anything, is that, we can, can we just kind of be assured that that process is gonna continue, or would we wanna incorporate well, continuation I think, of that discussion or something yeah. into what I mean it is a difficult problem I think when they put the guard house there and then pledge to provide education to the drivers um, you know however long ago it was five seven years ago to try to address the problem at that point um, it had isn't I mean the whole time since that last permit was issued it, it's been an ongoing issue and I think um, I'm not sure what the solution is. I think the counselors were, I mean, they, the, the plan was um, approved and implemented as designed. Right. Um, I think there, there probably, <clears throat> there may be some other issues that could address this, but making a bigger sign on Bridge Street really <clears throat> is too late because the trucks are now into the neighborhood. They right. can't go onto Main Street because they're going to hit the bridge. Right. They have to cut through a neighborhood somewhere. So um, it's really too late at that point to have a sign anyway. So no matter how big it is. Yeah. Um, so I think that there, there probably needs to be some more efforts internal to the site on Coke's part to figure out and and deal with the GPS issue and the contractors who are coming and um, figure out some other management strategy to really address it as opposed to physical changes. I mean, yes, they could make a no right in, but they also allow, car I think you allow cars in that entrance too. So cars can come into the right in yeah. from the south, but not trucks. Well, we're yeah. looking at eliminating cars coming in from that direction as well. Okay. I mean, that, that would be our goal to do yeah. that as well. And, and as far as the communication, it's a constant communication but we don't have the same drivers show up at our facility on a daily basis. Right. But part of the effort here is, is with these spaces as well, is that if we were able to turn the trucks a little bit more, maybe we can get preferred status with some of the drivers mm -hmm. that are being assigned to our location. Um, so that we think would also help. Would that eliminate the need for them to stop at the guardhouse? I'm sorry. Does that eliminate the need for them to stop at the guardhouse? No, they still have to no. stop at the guardhouse, okay. but we're able to move our trucks through the property quicker. Okay. Preferred drivers are more vigilant. They they're smarter drivers. What do you mean by a preferred well, driver? There are drivers that go to your facility on a consistent basis, uh -huh. as opposed to those that have never been to your facility. And, and that's what tends to happen: is that we get drivers that have never been to our facility, so they go through. The wrong area as opposed right. to coming up in a different direction um, when is our next meeting uh july 11 is that right yeah july 11. so okay it, it occurs to me one option would be for us to continue the matter till the next meeting and give them a chance to work on a solution to this problem we can't micromanage it for them right. but they can use that time to figure out a solution maybe ask Terry to participate in their meetings so as a neutral observer. Uh, but, well, but I don't think we can impose a solution right. now. I think it would be fair enough to Coca-Cola to address that 
rather than the drivers. I mean, the drivers have to be keep track of them. Coca-Cola should address that, not say that the drivers do not, they are not used to, or I think it would be the Coca-Cola, in, in fairness of this whole thing, to address this problem with the, the parking and the traffic. Um, I mean, alternatively, they're saying that adding these pads, which is the yeah, project in front of you, part. will facilitate um, the um, reduction of yeah. those vehicles on <clears throat> industrial drive. So, you know, there is this parallel process going on to sort of look at the bigger management picture with the city councilor, the ward councilor. Um, so I, I don't necessarily, you know, there may be solutions that are sort of soft solutions and not into the infrastructure that have to be done on the on the other side of this that may be hard to a condition and b um, ensure that they've been that they're continuously um, addressed. So, right. um, yeah, I mean the the challenge is attaching attaching conditions that are that actually yeah, have some nexus to yeah. to this particular project in front of us. But um, Terry, go ahead, please. Well, I was, I was going to, you know, where you just addressed it, I, I wonder if we can, do we even have the option of expanding the conversation around those parking spaces in the rear to address anything out front? I would guess I think not. that would be a difficult, well, I think it would be difficult to make the... Well, but it's all parking for access and parking for trailers, so it <coughs> seems related. Yeah, and so well, plain site plan review is around the impact on the surrounding abutters and the neighborhood correct so um, right i'm just i you know the, you've heard that this will help reduce that um problem by being by allowing track the tractor trailers to be parked more quickly and then um you know pull off the street then theoretically more quickly i don't know well first of all even if you were looking at um having them evaluate where the um gate is the entry gate that would probably take more than just two weeks to figure out whether it's going to work on the site um so and i'm not sure that um you know that's not on the table you're not you know right now they're not asking to re redesign the whole front of their project you need to evaluate the butter comments and see if there's a way to address that obviously they've answered in part by saying that the solution is partially within the um, creation of this new pad um, so I'm not sure that you could require them to modify the whole front of the site based on that Chris, go ahead. My initial thoughts when I saw this, um, I know we're talking about how we think that more trailer locations will act for a quicker turnaround, but my initial thought when I was reviewing this was, oh great, we're going to have more traffic because now we have more opportunity for more trailers to come in. And when I did sit on TPC for those last couple of years and I was in front of the residents from that area on Lincoln and Day and whatnot, somebody had brought to the brought to us that GPS no longer sends tractor trailers down left off of the highway coming mm -hmm. north that that's no longer unless that's been reset in the GPS you know things are always being updated but they thought that it was due to the congestion on Damon Road that the tractor trailers come to the end of the highway they look forward and say no way I want to get in and get out then they turn left so I'm not sure mm -hmm. it's a very complicated matter Initially, I didn't think your tractor, your addition of 14 tractor trailers was going to improve the quickness of turnaround. My initial thought was, this is Coca-Cola's opportunity to get more trucks in to make more money, which is fine. It's not about making money or not making money. But I was thinking, this is about opening up more square footage to get more trailers in, which is just more traffic since we haven't solved the traffic that we've been fighting with for seven years, or at least the residents. I don't, in that I don't know if you actually uh, have been there and, and looked, but a lot of the, I think the real issue is <clears throat> the residential streets. Because even when they come from, you know, they have to go around the circle, and they're still coming from the north. Because they're, they really, to try to make that bend right. into this shack coming from, from the uh, south, you can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. So what they do is they drive and they go through the circle, go around the circle, and then come the other way. 
So it, it's, um, although I, I respect and understand uh, your concern about stacking and things like that, you know, they still, I think one of the concerns is coming through the residential area. And as, as David had mentioned, I guess there's discussions going on with the traffic board about what they can do about certain streets and things like that. In fact, if you go all the way down there, if you're down Bridge Street, on Day Street, and at, at least three other streets down there, there are all signs, no truck traffic, no truck traffic, right. $300 <laughs> fine. Well, obviously, no, somebody doesn't, care. you know, a few people don't care. Um, so, and you know, that kind of gets beyond their control at that point as to how many signs they can, and they're pretty visible. Right. I mean, you, yeah, cannot, they are. you cannot miss no, them. I don't, I don't disagree that Coca-Cola can't stand out on that street and wait for people to try to turn and then right. stop them because at some level they're going to hit the bridge down here, which right. is a bigger problem. But just addressing the two issues for me was I think GPS is not sending people that way. At least that's what I was told when I sat on TPC. And my first thought was that this wasn't going to help get people in and out more. It was just going to create more opportunity for Coca-Cola to have more trailers during the day to come in, load their products, and leave. So We're not increasing our truck traffic. It's the same number of trucks that are coming in. It's giving us more maneuverability more within the site. They have problems now as it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it, looking out of my office, I could watch the trucks, and I don't think they're wantonly turning down the streets. I, I don't think anyone's actually alleging that. They all look flummoxed. They're look sitting, they all look flummoxed. They're sitting there in their trucks, looking at the sign, do not turn, looking at the GPS. I, I think by that point, they're stuck. Right. The stacking, uh, if there's one truck at the guard gate, that's it. Everyone else has to stack on the street. And I think anyone who's been through there can say, it's a frequent issue. So I, I think somehow the solution is going to involve getting more than one truck onto your property at a time. Like I said, we can definitely take a look at that as well to see what opportunities are there. Mm -hmm. um, but we, I do know that if you bring it in too far, it cuts off circulation to part of the property right. that we currently have. Alan? Can I ask, if you had another two weeks to work on this, do you think you may be more likely to come up with a solution? I think it would take longer than that. And obviously, it's a, it's a whole different process that you're taking a look at as well. And I don't think two weeks is going to be enough time. How long would it take? Um, I'd have to get with the local management and take a look at it, since I don't, I'm not running the, this operation here. But it's also, we can't mandate that they undergo a site plan yeah. revision. Well, is that clear? Since this all involves parking and tractor trailers and traffic circulation. Well, I think you have to look at what's in front of you. They're asking for expansion of the trailers. You've received one about our notice, and you know about an issue that um, needs to be addressed from a management perspective. However, that sort of that all gets thrown into the pile for you all to review. Um, and you need to evaluate whether what's in front of you is really um, going to be worse because they're adding this, or, or um, will it actually, uh, as they've suggested, will it actually help the situation? Um, but no, you can't. I mean, I think that um, uh, that you have to evaluate the plans that are in front of you and determine whether that site plan meets the standard. Um, of review knowing that you know there is an existing situation and it's a large company that's in the industrial park that's um, an important part of the city in terms of um, mm -hmm. um, presence and jobs and all of that but you you know there are issues obviously conflicts that come up with industrial uses in neighborhoods this isn't adding to that and in fact, it may be helping it. So that could be part of your evaluation because they're asking for an expansion of the parking lot that's for those trailers, mm -hmm. not to adjust anything else on the front. And you're not bringing more trucks, right? So, right. And you're, you're not to bring more trucks. That already says, right? Yeah. Go ahead, Trixie. I, I find it interesting, though, in their proposal and their narrative, they never use the rationale that we're improving circulation really or where this will help to improve the stacking up of trucks on the outside right. this new parking area so 
um, that seems to. I can be I can address that. In reality, the whole issue of the parking thing didn't even come up until after all that was done. Yeah. So that's why we can't. We were given the notice from the abutter, and that's why we addressed it for today in the meeting. But that was this was long after the narrative was prepared. Yeah. And I know it was going to be you know an issue brought up right up front. We would have been able to address it at that time, sir. In the narrative itself. Right. I mean, uh, yeah, I. I mean, I'm very sensitive to what's, you know, to the stacking on the street. I'm having a hard time coming up with or envisioning what appropriate conditions would be on this particular application, you know, like on this particular project and this specific request that would, that would be a, a mitigation. You know, I, I mean, I think we can sort of think about a lot of different creative things that could happen to, to either you know carrots and sticks that would reduce that the stacking outside of the guard gate I'm having a hard time rationalizing that they are related to <coughs> these new 12 mm. spaces and that's you know I mean I, I am pleased to hear the two things that a this is not designed specifically to increase the number of trucks that are going to be accessing the site and that there all already is existing discussion with Councillor Nash that you know if, if that is serious and that is happening and that's you know, and, yeah, you know yeah, coming to the table that's you know that's a very good indicator and the trees and the condition of, of adding the trees is a you know I mean that's a uh, that that's a very rational you know sort of addition yeah. to the to the discussion but um, but yeah I'm having a hard time figuring out how we could condition something that would have a meaningful impact on industrial drive um, off the property without getting away from what is actually in front of us and and maybe it is an enforcement issue maybe it's you know it's something for the police to say there's no stopping or standing and begin enforcing that i mean there's other kinds of solutions that are outside of site plan modifications yeah. um that may come up with councillor nash uh that might incentivize a site plan <laughs> shift mm -hmm. in the future but it it seems difficult to to condition that on this particular application I have a question about the sign. Did I understand you to say, maybe I misunderstood, that, that you cannot alter the sign that's already there or you can't place a sign there? Yeah, so I, I think as, as Michael indicated, it's I think it's part of the, inter or ma managed by the highway department. No, 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 it's yeah. on the opposite it's side on, of opposite. Red Street. And the reason we couldn't put, ideally the sign would be, a nice location would be right off the exit ramp. Yeah. Well, right, what but about just the existing location, which already has a sign because <coughs> it's existing, and make it much larger? I don't know the history of that, sir. My, my understanding, though, is that that sign is a certain size right now, and if it's made bigger, I don't know what kind of obstructions. That's a pretty busy intersection. I don't know if there would be site, you know, if the limit, if the size was limited to site restrictions at the intersection, from particularly from traffic that would be coming probably from uh, Hadley, right? Uh, because if it's at the corner of, ha of uh, Bridge and-, and If uh, it were feasible yeah. legally, you'd be willing to do it though. Absolutely. So. Yeah, if, if we knew who to work with in regards to that, if, if you guys can provide us a contact, mm -hmm. we would be glad to work with them on you can figure out modifications to size we could encourage the size. you to enlarge the yeah, size th that so is not an issue we would be glad to to work with them on that and see what options are available right. i mean we can't condition if we were to condition that then it, we can't do that because we would yeah. have to yeah. you don't know we, if it's possible yeah we don't know if it's possible no, we could have a provision that said if it were legally feasible they would do it i think there are a number of people looking at a, a, a whole uh, lots of different options for um, solving the issues, and I wouldn't want to. Um, One from the right. The mix. I would be concerned about um, assigning too much weight to one possible solution when it may have been a it may have been reviewed already or b it may be part of a, another package and maybe it's more appropriate to have signage somewhere else as opposed to right in that space. Well, uh, what surprises <laughs> me is that's the whole new construction of the roundabout. So there's right. all kinds of signage that's going to happen. And I, I, I guess I would expect that that's part of the discussion. I, I would be surprised that the city's not doing with something around better signage around the truck eating bridge, right. part of the roundabout, and something like this could be added to it. Although that's already gone through all of its final designs and everything. Right. So whether the city council or DPW has been able to 
provide any of that or whether there's a window to still do some signage but everything is up in the well not up in right, the air right, but everything's right. been up for discussion and yeah because Carolyn, of would that it, roundabout would it, be, would it be appropriate um i mean obviously our purview as the board is reviewing applications and making these determinations but would it be appropriate for the board to just send a letter to councillor nash encouraging the continued discussion with coca-cola and just sort of documenting our interest in mitigating some of the traffic issues i mean is that i mean you useful? could i think they're already they've already been working on that and right. they understand the problem and that i've had conversations with councillor nash about the permitting and yeah. how um you know essentially coke is complying with its permit there's right. just a bigger issue right. i think so there wouldn't be added value yeah. how are we feeling generally jana do you have any comments Do we feel that we have all our information and we can close the public hearing? I don't hear a motion, <laughs> so I'm going to assume no. <laughs> yeah. Should we we'll close the discussion? Is there a second? Yeah. All those in favor? Is there? A sure. Yeah, <laughs> I, like so I, I'm, I'm not sure because you know I, I appreciate your comment about the police or maybe other ways to handle the enforcement of this queuing right. up of large tractor trailers. It is impacting other people in the right. in the area, other industry, and I I certainly appreciate how what a, a, a wonderful asset to the city <clears throat> Coca Cola is, but so are those other mm -hmm. businesses in the industrial park. And does the city have another opportunity or any leverage to to kind of move Coke towards some mitigation of this problem, mm -hmm. other than the special permit? I don't know if the city police are going to move in around parking standards or no standing or, and certainly the, the, the neighborhoods have put up with a lot for the past 15 years mm -hmm. um, without it, it really, really being addressed. So granted, I know that there doesn't seem to be an easy solution, but I'm not sure what, if it's <coughs> onerous to say if we forestall this for six weeks while Coke looks at some other opportunities to work on that congestion there is at the end of the world. They're not at the end of the construction season. Um, right. Certainly this is a pretty straightforward um, construction project. Um, so I, I'm not sure if I, I, I agree about closing a public hearing because in six weeks we might want to get more information from the public or, or from counselors or whatever. So I guess I, I, I'm not voting in favor okay. of closing a public hearing at this point. Okay. Uh, Just for the discussion, I, I agree. I, th I think the fact that it's a complicated problem doesn't mean we should pass on it. Um, the people, goodwilled people who discuss it seriously, could I fairly confident come up with solutions? And I think we owe it to the neighborhood and to the public to do everything we can to encourage it. Yeah, it's not, I mean, unless there's some reason why a delay of whatever period, a month, would jeopardize something for Coke, I'd like to see us give them that encouragement. I think the only delay from our standpoint is just more from a funding standpoint. Um, obviously, when you push it a little bit further back from a funding standpoint, we have uh, monthly, quarterly meetings on, from a funding, we push it too far back, then we get into kind of a wet season. We're trying to do this actually before the school um, mm -hmm. school year starts up again. Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously pushing it back could, could impact it from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. And then we obviously don't want to get into, into the wet season or the weather where it completely would have, we, we wouldn't be able to do it this year. Right. Um, I mean, this is a tough one. I mean, I'm, I'm very sensitive to what's happening. I'm, I'm just finding it difficult to explain or assert that what they're asking to do is going to make the problem worse. And, and to ask that they fix a problem, that they've come here to do something on their site that isn't related. You know, if there were a plan to change the layout at the front of the site, that's our opportunity to weigh in. It just seems 
Like, if we were to deny this, for example, you know, they may never come back, and then the problem is still unaddressed. You know, I just I don't think that it's it's a <coughs> rational trigger to say, go back and figure out how you can fit tractor trailer spots on the site that that doesn't naturally require any other work at the front. So that's that's my challenge. I mean, I'm not. I'm not, you know, hugely excited about, you know, not being able to include a condition that's going to have a meaningful impact on industrial drive, but I, I don't think that approving this very specific request is, is going to make things worse than what they are. Um, yeah, because it appears that it's the gatehouse due to their process, right? whatever they have to go through for however long it takes them to do that then another truck, then another truck. Right. So it doesn't matter if there's 14 sites empty in the back. Right. There's still however many people at the gatehouse right. doing their jobs the way the Coke wants them to do it, right. which takes up time, and then the next truck stacks up. So right. it's almost like one is not going to help the I don't yeah, see how I mean, one's going to help the other, but... Well, there have, there have been instances where uh, there's been a truck waiting for a loading dock, for example. Yeah. So, 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 so we're yeah. trying to open up something so they're not <laughs> right. loading and, you know, <coughs> and try to get them in quicker if we can so that nobody's sitting out on the street waiting for a dock, for example. They can't even go through the gate because once they go through the gate, <coughs> where do they go? Right. So, so the, the so turning process is... minute, we do have a motion on the table to close the public hearing. Can we retake that vote and decide if we are not closing the public hearing at this time? So all those in favor of closing the public hearing? And those opposed? So the public hearing is remaining open, so go ahead. <laughs> okay. Now what I was going to say is that um, right now the turn time to pull a, a, a truck in and out of the facility is 60 to 90 minutes. We think it's going to increase, I mean, it's going to be reduced to about 15 minutes because they can drop a trailer, pick up another trailer, and get off site because before they had to wait till a dock position to open up. So once again, you still have the issue of, you know, stacking. You have can only address one truck at a time. We can take a look at the process and say, hey, can we, is there anything that we can do to reduce the amount of time that we're looking at? But there's certain criteria that we look at when trucks come into our facility, obviously. But um, we do, as I said, I think there's an, op you know, these truck spaces will help increase the flow as opposed to, um, possibly some of the stacking that's occurring. I'm not saying it's going to be eliminated by no means, but I, I think it'll help reduce that and then working with Council Member Nash uh, with opportunities there, looking at the signage, um, you know, we'll do whatever we can. To, we'll continue those conversations mm -hmm. um, to, and we understand, you know, there is a stacking problem, but it's hard to say when a truck is going to come and whether we had three staging spaces within our property line doesn't mean you're going to get an influx of trucks that are still going to be sitting out there. So what you're saying is that the trucks aren't actually, it's not primarily the process at the gate that's holding them up, it's that they need spaces to go once they're it's, inside it's, the property. It's, it's, it's both, actually. I mean, because there are some times when all the docks are full and they can't get into the space, and there are times where there is dock space available, but there's a process at the gate, and it as I said, you can't really time your trucks coming into the facility. You can set periods when they come in, mm -hmm. but you know, in, in 60 minutes, you can see nothing, and then in the next five minutes, you can have three trucks show up. Yeah. So it's, it's hard to regulate that. So I don't understand why they don't queue up along the southern edge of that long driveway that leads into the new expanded gray area. That's one long driveway there. <coughs> I, exactly. Why don't that you? That area? Well, yeah. Because there are trucks that, I mean, we have docks in this corner right. here. We have docks in this corner here. It, it's a fairly narrow road. So if you start, if you have traffic going in, you have to keep a lane open, obviously. If you start staging trucks along here and you have trucks that need to get to this back area, so they can't when, do that. So when I was there the other day, there was about six trailers there, not cabs, but trailers parked on the side there on the grass. The, um, okay. eliminating that two-way passage. So if those trucks, trailers now are staged on the new spaces, that would open up that whole lane for that kind of queuing, perhaps. Um, again, I don't want to resolve yeah. the situation, yeah, but yeah. I think there may be some things that Coke hasn't looked at on the site and with some changes that if we just move this forward, maybe Coke won't feel the need to kind of 
take that in-house look at yeah. some well as i said citizens. i think we are we've started the process with council member nash yep. before this anyway yep. so as i said we've we've looked at the signage before we were told no so we understand there's an issue out there and we continue to try to work on on that issue say so it's not that we have ignored it um we're looking for a solution as well yeah i mean i, I think that i think you're raising a good point I, th I think that we have to at a certain point trust that there's that we have a role and that the council has a role and that this problem is is bigger than the site plan that's in front of us and <clears throat> I feel like we can't relitigate a bad site plan that was approved years ago. Like we can't undo what, where this gatehouse is, the guardhouse is right now. Um, but if that process is underway with Councilor Nash, I mean, he's an elected official, so he has a very vested interest in continuing this conversation and making it happen for his constituents. You know, I, I mean, that's a big incentive. I feel like it's. I feel like the risk of him dropping it because we approve this is is low. Like it doesn't. I believe that doesn't necessarily. We, we have just one meeting in July. Mm -hmm. So then go into August, August what? 8th. August 8th. Yeah. But, you know, again, I mean, if we were to push to August 8th, it, it doesn't seem like there would be a rational way to require that there be a change in the 12 trailer spaces that they've identified that would change the situation on industrial drive because now the proposal is not there there is no evidence that it would change it for the better or worse either way I mean, they suggest it may get better that may be true but i don't see what we could get out of pushing to august that's that's well beyond the scope of the application that's before us you know that's basically saying to them take on another bigger project a comment from the public. The public, the public comment is still open, yes. So these folks are my neighbors. Uh, I'm Jonathan Wright. Wright Builders, our office and facility is right across the street. They've been wonderful neighbors. They take great care of the property. Um, so well, we have a hearing that's now <laughs> 25, 35 minutes ago <laughs> of something else. But that said, um, we have we watch the trucks, you know, you're not here. We, yeah. we see the trucks. The issue here is the trucks are coming the wrong way into the property. And that's a huge issue. There's 150 or 160 trucks a day coming in here. And the young drivers use Waze. They don't use Google Maps. They don't use, and Waze is a way to get around. And so it brings you up all those side streets. Yeah. And once they're past what will be the roundabout, there's no turning back. The only people who can, you know, in all fairness, the only people who can change this is the people receiving the goods and managing the incoming drivers. You know, at Walmart, you have nine minutes. That's your window. If you don't make it, you don't get your delivery. So I would encourage you to take some action because really they, they're kind of stymied here. If they have, you know, I've had six or seven conversations with uh, Councillor Nash. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have any authority. He has none. The only people who have authority over those roads are the DPW mm -hmm. and the jurisdictions that are represented here. So I would encourage you, not because I want to be a you know an improper neighbor, but it is difficult. I mean, emergency vehicles cannot get through. We have two trucks stand up in front of the Montessori school that can't get to go around the loop because there's a truck already in the hopper at the gatehouse and one halfway across the street. You can't get out of my property in either direction. So. I think it is a really serious matter, and it's not the number of trucks, it's how they're stacking, and there has to be a, a process of discipline in the use of public streets. So we love having, as I say, great neighbors. We don't mind the trucks. It's just what happens when they get there. So if there's something you can encourage to do that, then that would be a great thing for the neighborhood. And it's been six years of your ability to move that. So this may be the moment when you come to Jesus a little bit on that. So thank you. So procedural question for Carolyn. I mean, once again, I still struggle to, to identify exactly what our ability is to address this. You know, I mean, can you confirm if, if we do have the authority to I mean, it try isn't, to address this problem? It is with the site plan. If you, if you as a board made a motion to continue this because you wanted this issue resolved, you certainly could do that the their options are not to expand and just continue on 
um, or if they really feel like the pads will help the situation and it's important to do that for other business reasons, mm -hmm. then um, it certainly, I'm sure they want to get it done before winter, as they said. So it might, um, it might move them to, um, to a faster solution so I mean yes you can continue the hearing and if you feel as a board that it's important to address that that's within your jurisdiction I, I think what I've always heard when an applicant comes in for site plan review it kind of opens things up to not only the exact detail of what they want to do but to the other factors of their Special permit. Special permit, sorry. Right. Yeah. Well, and this, site, is, this is a site, site plan. plan. This is a site plan. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So it is within our purview because right. of now we can see how that, how the operation is impacting the neighborhood right. in a way that maybe we didn't see seven years ago at the other um, site plan. There was a change so, then to address issues. The guardhouse pulling that in was, yeah. I think, at the time, a way to get trucks off the street. Yeah. Um, I, I think that you know it's a it's obviously a balance you you all need if if you feel like there's more that needs to be done than just creating a pad that will help pull the tractors off the, you know yes that's part of your decision making process um is there a motion appropriate depends what motion you're planning to make <laughs> Um, the board can make that decision. I mean, yeah. we, you can make it and we can vote on it. <laughs> make a motion to continue this to August 8th. So, Do you folks feel that, just a moment, that we need more discussion about this? Or do folks feel that that's the direction that we're going? Let me just add, I, it seems to me that leaves plenty of time in the construction season. Is there a second for that motion? To, I'm sorry, to, what? to continue this hearing to August, to the August meeting. I'll second it. Discussion? So, uh, so I think by giving another six weeks, it'll give the in-house crew at Coke some time to look at this situation and also give Councilor Nass kind of the support that he might need and a little bit of leverage to continue his work mm -hmm. with the neighborhood and the city council. Um, and maybe we and, and maybe it won't be a home run solution mm -hmm. but at least it'll be the next best effort to kind of um, mitigate some of that traffic situation out there mm -hmm. by both coke and the city so i i think this the neighborhood and the other abutters deserve this extra time to look at that other comments doesn't this also though as you were saying leave open the possibility that they will just decide to do nothing i mean we're, we're leaving open the possibility that they might do more but also opening up the possibility that they might do less mm -hmm. there's no reason they would change their mind if because it's delayed a month or five weeks wow. uh, well, and you said quarterly they have their reasons. there's all kinds of reasons why yeah. they change their right. minds they have their reasons i mean right yeah it's so complicated i don't know i was thinking like well maybe they should hire do some uh, um, details at the bottom of Lincoln and Dana funded by Coca-Cola and every time a truck comes down they get jammed up for 350 and then that right. truck has to turn around in the ball field area and then all those truck drivers start talking to one another and they say do not turn left off the highway I mean news travels fast they're not the truck drivers are not being we don't have a police force that can just sit there but we do have a police force that's being paid to sit down at the weed yeah, shop and telling everybody, not come in this direction, keep going, not come in this direction, keep going. If, if a major tractor trailer comes down the wrong direction and the police have the right to enforce it with a right. ticket, I would imagine within a certain amount of time, truck drivers would know. Mm -hmm. So that's do you another feel that, do that. Do you feel that, that continuing this to August would allow that conversation to happen or well i think it wouldn't hurt i mean i'm not saying that my suggestion would be put forward right, right. But i'm just saying in general i think that i think people are frustrated and it's not that we're not happy to have coca-cola i mean obviously i am happy to have them too but i just feel like i've been listening to this since i sat on tpc five years ago and mm -hmm. it's like wow this is doesn't seem like one thing has happened and I think maybe the 14 trailer sites, if we're not getting more traffic, 
will be helpful, but I don't know that it's still going to solve some of the other problems. Right. And I don't know that they have to solve any of the other problems if we keep giving them the opportunity right. to just keep developing on their site without knowing that it's kind of impacting continuously the abutting neighbors. Right. Uh, right. Just doesn't seem fair, but. Well, we have a motion on the table to continue to August with a second. All those in favor? Is there a time? Is August, did you say time? August 8th. Oh, excuse me, August, August 8th. 8th. August 8th, 7 uh, p.m. 7 p.m. All those in favor? One, two, three. Those opposed? Terry, what's your? <coughs> you're opposed or you're in favor? Uh, uh, I'm in favor. You're in favor. So four in favor, three opposed. So the motion passes. The hearing is continued to August 8th at 7 p.m. with the expectation that there will be some discussion with Councillor Nash and others about mitigating the stacking on Industrial Drive and the traffic. Okay. And, and also probably some details around the planting of the seven trees within. Well, we haven't. We, I mean, that would be yeah. approval. Not, yeah, I think. Yeah. So that. In the absence of that, we can still condition it yep. um, at a later date. <clears throat> if they, I think if they wanted to address that, they could. Hey. Thank you. As, I, as, as other people in the neighborhood have, I've sat there at times and. It'd be great if there was a little more detail. I mean, anecdotally, every. Sorry, I'm going to ask because our hearing is closed. That you take the conversation with. That you can maybe have a conversation with them separately. But we have closed the hearing, and we are going to go right into our next hearing. Pop, pop, and fizz, fizz. It is just water. That's a <laughs> um, yeah, and crying about the budget. Okay, that's there. Hey, guys. It benefits them, so they're going to do it for the benefit. No, I think I'll keep this till August 8th. Yeah. Hey. We are about to open up our 745 site plan by Wright Builders for five single family homes at Ford Crossing, Northampton map ID 31C 76 80. And Mark Sullivan is still recused, is that correct? Great. Why'd you come here? Just stayed home. Just stayed home. <laughs> Ceiling. It's disgusting. It's a bug. <laughs> the debate starts in half an hour. I'm aware. <laughs> I'm aware. <laughs> 28 minutes. Yeah. That's why we're getting that things moving. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got it. No. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Just about this thing. Tessa knows a tricky one. Is this? Oh, uh, they uh, yeah. moderate it, but. No, it is. No, it is. I mean, we'll see what happens. Right. Yes. Yeah, it is. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Hi. Good evening. I'm Jonathan Wright from Wright Builders Hi. at 48 Bates Street, an address you just heard about. Uh, I'm here with uh, Mark Darnold from the Berkshire Design Group about Meadow Run, which is the three, a five lot subdivision on the north side of Ford Crossing at Village Hill. Can you hear me all right? Okay, great. So I know Terry and others are not here. Do you want me to just? We have one, two, three, four, five, and we have five people, so. It's site plan, so you need four. Yeah, so you can begin if, I mean. Okay, great. They're they're right behind you. They're coming in droves. It's so exciting. Thank you. Um, so really happy to be back in front of you again. Ten, this is 10 years that we've been at Village Hill. This is the last five residential lots at Village Hill. And uh, Beth Murphy from Mass Development is here. And uh, uh, they've awarded this project to us. Uh, it was stipulated to be five residential lots. Mark's going to present the details. Um, um, but over the last 10 years, the advances in building science have allowed us to uh, engineer these houses to be net positive energy on an annual basis. So they will, they are engineered to do that, and they will do that, and they will be solar powered. Um, 
when you look at the site plans, you'll see that we do not have any uh, vehicles backing out of driveways or shared driveways that cross sidewalks. We have a one-way common alley that serves all five houses. It's a great piece of zoning um, uh, innovation that's been accomplished that allows us to have a narrow um, alley in the back that serves all the buildings. There are no heat islands between buildings, uh, which is a significant factor in uh, the global warming potential of a property. And um, uh, the way the houses are designed, they are the, the uh, maximum allowed distance back from the front setback, which is 10 feet to the porch. The porches are all 6 by 12 or 14 feet, which means they will hold more than a pumpkin and a chair. You can actually have conversation there. So all this follows the design guidelines that have been developed over the years and which we're really proud to be part of implementing. Um, and so it will continue and really cl uh, finish the, the wraparound of the, of the community uh, pending the completion of the co-housing and the TCB project. So more on the, you can see the property here that uh, Mark has noted. And those are the lots that are proposed to us. And you will remember that on the far left, there is a uh, walkway that's just a, uh, a pathway area from Ford Crossing back to TCB that will be their responsibility to, to build. Um, the site plan you'll you see up on the, is really, really a decorative one, but you can see that with the exception of the new entrance off of, um, uh, off of uh, Ford Crossing, there are no new curb cuts. So there's uh, the on-street parking remains, the greenway remains. The houses are uh, matched in pairs in sets to minimize, to maximize open space around the houses and minimize asphalt. The houses themselves, though it's not entirely, you know, this is not your first concern. There are three designs. Uh, a uh, revival farmhouse, a craftsman farmhouse, and an arts and crafts cottage. And uh, uh, we anticipate all of them being built in various configurations there. So those are the designs. And I turn it over to Mark. Great. Okey-doke. So um, there are, there are uh, these are details of the, the designs themselves. The uh, exteriors are uh, cement board siding. These are high performance R5-2 windows. These are 10 inch cavity walls. All of these will be old certified at uh, 0.6 ear changes per hour, which is uh, passive house standard. Um, and I don't know the, the uh, solar are by owner. Um, so we don't provide them. Uh, you, they need the tax credits. You can see the, the minimizing the uh, west and uh, uh, north elevation glass. Uh, working to have, it's very tricky to develop a one-story uh, traditional house since there is not the, the architectural uh, guidelines that is one story. And yet people aging want this. So we, we have developed this and are grateful for the support of mass development for doing so. Um, and I think now I met you. Yeah? So we're doing our just a quick clarification. His dance. Yes, sir. Yeah, you mentioned in the beginning that this is a subdivision. Is that not the right word? Right. right. Okay. Because the whole area is master plan. Right? <coughs> yes, I should. This is not should. a separate subdivision review. No, there will be a, an alteration to the A&R plan that's already filed to allow for this uh, common driveway. Mm -hmm. We uh, do have a stormwater permit. We do have um, homeowners documents that are in final draft, which will assign responsibilities for all the various drainage and maintenance obligations thither and on. So, okay. Thank, Thank you. Anymore. Thank you all. Right here. Right. Um, again, um, this here plan shows you uh, the, concept, the concept for the driveway is to have a one-way driveway. It enters off a of Ford Crossing and it exits onto the drive that's going to go to the community building. Um, building. And the exit of the driveway is actually off, uh, opposite of the, the co-housing driveway, so it's a four-way intersection was the best place to do that. We chose that one-way direction rather than the other way primarily to prevent headlights from heading down sort of south. It, uh, the headlights will be going into the site and towards the um, code housing project, so there will be no conflict of that. Very again, also, <laughs> um, 
you'll see the houses we have, those, those represent the three different type of houses that we have, the, the, um, the craftsman and the farmhouse, and there's also the bungalow. Uh, the reason you see the little shading on the back of the houses, that's the potential of putting a bungalow. We did that for the purposes of doing the calculations to show the maximum build out that could happen based upon the houses we have shown there, the three different houses, the two houses, the craftsman and the farmhouse in dark with the large shaded one for the uh, bungalow. Uh, just to note that to the north, uh, the people will have access to the open space for the community builders building that's up there. It is screened from that location um, by the, by the um, community builders building that's gonna be up there. So there's already screening provided by the abutter. Uh, to the left, next to the walkway, we do have the curve of the yellow uh, driveway. We do have a split rail fence there just to keep the separation, a little bit of privacy, separate the uh, walkway from the driveway. It'd be a split rail fence with some planting just to uh, augment the scenario. Um, this is, uh, again, more of the detailed planting plan showing the uh, shrubbery that will be placed around the buildings. Uh, it's, again, there's really no street trees associated with this. It's in compliance with the uh, existing freeway location. And I'm gonna go to the next slide, which, um, actually shows, I'm going to back, uh, it's hard to point out there, but currently there is a driveway near, um, well, actually the current cut for the driveway is that where you see the crosswalk, and we're actually going to be closing that driveway off and installing the crosswalk there to enhance the pedestrian circulation for the entire site, actually, not only our site. And where the existing, I mean, where the proposed driveway is going in, there's an existing street tree there. So we're going to be taking that tree out and transplanting it further up. So there'll be no net loss of street trees associated with the project. So we're decreasing the size of the existing curb cut, um, creating a smaller curb cut, installing a crosswalk to enhance the, the whole subdivision, and um, changes to the existing circulation. These are just details. Uh, trying to go back to some of the other aspects of the project. Each one of these lots is going to be about 7,000 square feet. Um, as Jonathan mentioned before, there's existing a and plan there, I mean existing subdivision plan, but now that we know what the details are, we're going to have to modify that slightly for two reasons. One, to accommodate exactly where the houses are going to go and also to accommodate the common driveway around the rear of the project. Um, the driveway is going to be a 12-foot wide driveway, and that's adequate for the single um, one-way traffic. Each one of these houses has a two-car garage. Um, there's also adequate space between the front of the garage and the common driveway to park two more cars. So if uh, they have visitors or they have extra cars, they can utilize their driveways and not block the uh, access around the site. Um, the whole project will be uh, serviced with sewer and water. We have done some extensive drainage on there, sort of unique drainage aspect. Uh, we're proposing to sheet flow most of the drainage from the site and all the driveways and the uh, common driveway to the north. It'll be intercepted by a stone-filled trench with a sub-drain inside, which will take the water and direct it towards the uh, northerly detention basin. The plans that you have actually show the stormwater heading south towards the uh, southerly detention basin. But going through the detailed calculation with Doug McDonald, we determined that we better to send it to the north. So there's a slight change from the plan you have in front of you and the plan that was submitted to uh, DEP, I mean DPW, and they've approved that modification in the stormwater permit that was issued today. Um, the roofs, in addition to uh, the drainage that we're accommodating through all these other aspects, will have dry wells. Um, so that's clean water. They're small dry wells, but we're going to encourage as much infiltration, stormwater management as possible on the site. So we're putting small dry wells uh, for each one of the roofs. When those dry wells exceed capacity, they will overflow, and there are small river gardens. So we double, we're doubling up on that aspect. And if the uh, dry wells, I mean, if the uh, rain gardens overflow, then they'll go into these uh, stone-filled trench that we have there. So we have like a three-way scenario, and we're trying to do the maximum extent practical about stormwater management. Um, again, for the drainage scenario, because we don't know exactly what house is going in there, we took the largest footprint we could find, and that's what we did our drainage calculations on. So if a smaller house is there, our drainage is even better than what we showed. And just as a sort of final comment, this density is a little less 
that was originally encouraged on the original uh, site plan or the original uh, overall design for the project. So there's a slight decrease from what was originally approved as far as traffic impacts, utility impacts, et cetera. So I think at the end of the day, uh, we're less impacted than what was originally approved by the uh, original overall Village Hill project. That's a quick summary, and I'd be glad to answer more questions. Just got a tongue, but I'll wait a while. Okay. <laughs> we'll take some public comment. Yes, go ahead. Just add in that uh, near where that crosswalk is, there was the intention for a road, and so we have uh, uh, water available there, and we will be, they'll be taking the potable water from that location and distributing it. The sewer will go. I never like it when this. Uh, the sewer is going to go down and, and be picked up in the Olander extension. Okay. Um, we had thought we would go to the south with the stormwater, but uh, uh, and let's just say over the years there have been many calculations about how much reserve stormwater was available where, and, and they have been accumulated in different engineering formats. Mm -hmm. So it was wise that this was <coughs> reviewed again by your office, triggered by Doug McDonald. And in fact, there really isn't any reserve capacity down there for the south. And uh, coincidentally, uh, the co-housing people are going to be finishing their uh, 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 interceptor uh, infrastructure this fall, so we can tie it in there. So that's a happy, uh, happy circumstance. We have a place to take the, the stormwater where it will be properly treated, and we have processes to accomplish that. And the homeowners association documents assign responsibilities and pays for it. And so. Great. We'll take comments from the public. If there is anyone who would like to make a comment about this project, please come up to the podium. Give us your name and your address. Is everyone just listening out there? If there are no comments from the public, uh, we'll continue with board discussion. And we'll keep the public hearing open because we may have some questions for you. Um, there were a number of DPW comments. You did, did you receive all of those? We got the stormwater permit today, yes. I, sent, I just sent you the comments at the beginning of this meeting because I just got them, so. Okay, I have not seen I those. mean, I, they were here earlier this afternoon, but they didn't come to me till I opened my computer. Should, shall I read them into the? Yeah, or, yeah, either one. Let me just pull those up. Okay. Um, Started. There's a whole slew of comments, so I'll go through them fairly quickly, but as detailed as possible. Um, let's see here. So we know about the general. This is a new mouse. Look, oh, there we are. Uh, with regard to the existing light pole, the light pole should be relocated. Uh, and it's proposed to be relocated west of the proposed curb cut. The call out contains direction to remove and relocate the street tree, which you mentioned. Note that a street tree hearing for the relocation is going to be required. Um, I'm assuming the Public Shade Tree Commission. Uh, any and all existing granite curb cut that curbs that are removed for salvage and not reused should be returned to DPW. Uh, it's a hot commodity. Uh, the common driveway off Ford Crossing is proposed as 10 feet wide with a 12 foot wide exit. I had thought that you'd said it was 12. It's 12. It's mentioned as 12. Okay. Um, that was the 12 is desired. 12 is desired yes the the recommendation from DPW is to, to widen it to 12 or keep it at 12 uh, imprinted thermoplastic crosswalk matching the others at village hill should be installed um, there's oh at the intersection of Ford crossing and Olander Drive so um, to connect the sidewalks at that intersection so the thermoplastic crosswalk that matches the others should be installed connecting the sidewalks at the intersection of Ford and Olander. I don't understand that. I think you're talking about this um, sidewalk uh, where the, the old road was going to go north. I don't think we have any responsibilities 150 feet over here, do we? No, actually, we're Olander and Ford Crossing. We're at entrance to the co housing driveway yeah. and the half or the uh, TCB project. Yeah. Right there. So there was originally, when that was going to be a street going up, there's, there needs to be a crosswalk there at the crossing of um, where your driveway is essentially so exiting and coming out. So here? Yeah. So there's a crosswalk in here? No, no, down at the intersection of the street. Right there? Where the street oh, turns, oh. makes a 90 degree. Well, that should be part of the road construction for that road. We don't, we're not building that road. We have an easement to use it. 
Um, there, well, it, it's right at that intersection, so you're, so that should be installed there. So is it on the other plans? It I wasn't shown know. on your plan, so. It's not our work. If it's required there, it was required for the construction of that road by TCB and by the, we're not, we're not going into that street. We have no jurisdiction to change that. That's already uh, an approved permit, so we need some clarification. On okay. But you're building that sidewalk along the Olander Drive extension? Uh, all, all we're changing is thickening the sidewalk where our driveway exit comes out. We're working with the same contractor with, with the folks at uh, co-housing because they're going to build that and we're going to pay for the increment to bring it to the standard that it needs to be. So we'll get clarification from DPW on, on that, that. Yeah, I'll just look at the other plans. Request. So, yeah. um, the proposed crosswalk on Ford Crossing that we were just talking about should be the imprinted thermoplastic to match the existing. Depths of concrete walks are four inches, typical with six inches at driveways. Yeah. Please call out four inch sidewalk where the curb cut is being removed. Uh, there was a comment that there appears to be a potential conflict between the proposed new street tree and an existing gas line. Please review and revise accordingly. Is that? There's gas lines under that entire line of street trees. So, if you wanted to get the street off, it's going to be over a gas line. Yeah. Can you ask for clarification from the moment? No, or? you don't need, yeah, I mean, no. we can just, um, the street trees need to be planted, so at the site, when they go and do it, you know, with, they'll coordinate with the tree. We'll okay. Uh, existing water, gas, sewer, stubs that will not be utilized extend beyond the right-of-way limits onto private property. Yeah. Well, so then I think they're suggesting that the, the six and eight inch water stub shall be re-terminated in the green space between the sidewalk and the curb. These are just, you know, they're going to require you to do that when you do the construction. Eight inch sewer stub in the sewer manhole shall be plugged with brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the applicant shall determine with Columbia Gas um, what to do with the gas stub. Um, These buildings will not be serviced by gas. Right, but if there's a, yeah, so if, if the stub can remain, you just need to work that out with Columbia Gas. Okay. Dry wells shown do not indicate any surface grates or connecting pipes, although the detail on sheet 601 indicates that they're present. So I guess this is the small uh, The discrepancy. reason that is we have, again, dry well proposed for houses. We don't know which house is going to be put in there yet, and when we do, we'll just take it down to it. So okay. that's a construction detail that can be shown. Okay. Uh, then just a couple more requests from DPW. Revise the concrete walk detail to clarify that the thickness is four inches, typical for sidewalk, and then six inches at driveway. Uh, sewer clean out pipe size is not indicated, and they recommend the six inch. Uh, I don't know if that's what you were thinking, or but that's the recommendation from DPW. It's fine. Great. Um, they did, DPW has asked for a tree protection detail uh, and a granite curb detail, and then an imprinted thermoplastic crosswalk detail typical to Village Hill. So just a couple more Those can be couple more sheets. Final. Great. Thank you. Um, there are no other concerns from staff. So um, are there concerns and discussion among the board? I, mean, <laughs> I just have a couple of questions about the plans. Hey. Um, maybe someone could fill me in a little bit about the TCB project. I'm, I'm looking at the land behind to the, I think it's the north behind the project. Correct. And a lot of this is planting by others. Correct. Because uh, right now it's a, just a big flat meadow. Um, what's going to go on up out there? Well, those plants that are shown are, are taken right from the site plan. So they're all on the uh, site plan for that project. Those are, those are not uh, like suggested little brown, you know, green surface. Yeah, they've been copied phase. right over. <coughs> copied yeah, the approved site yeah, for yeah. GCP. Okay. You, you own them, I should say. You know, right. You, you can right. cause them to happen. Could, could somebody just remind me what TCB is doing back there so I can kind of understand the context of where this is fitting in with TCB? Yeah. It's a three story building, sort of an L shaped 53 units are going to be tucked in the back. So it's, a one, it's one structure. At the back of the lot, at the back of the meadow. And that's noted on our first plan here. You have the big bird's eye view of the site. Yes, right. Um, so it's back beyond this playground that is yet to be right. developed. Right. TCB yet. is building that. That playground. And TCB is building the path leading to the playground, yep. leading to that site. Okay. Yep. 
So there are the others. There are the others. Other comments? Um, on the planting plan, it's probably not your planting plan, um, but there's nine trees that I can't find on the plan that are specked out in the table. Um, right, so could you look into that? They are honey locusts, nine honey locusts, and they're some of the only good sized trees that are going to be planted, but I can't, I see them on the table, but not on the fallout of the diagram. So if that's what we go by down the road, can you? Well, I'm going to just clarify, clarify. Yeah. yes. Yeah, yes. okay, so that would be great. Any other comments or concerns? I really do appreciate the level of homework there. I didn't look at that. <laughs> Think about all those, all those pipes and storm water. I'm a retired guy. <laughs> you know, thank you. This, the, the hill, the name Meadow Run, is it going to be a signage out there or is it going to be like house number two, Meadow Run? What? It's no, just it'll be a, uh, street numbers. There's a informally, because we have to call the common drive something it's called meadow way i see but um it, there's nothing formal there's no signage you know there's no, you don't get there's no common house there's no cafeteria you know, right. meadow run is a state of mind George. Right. <laughs> um we'll, we'll take that on tape <laughs> how does uh garbage pickup happen in a small neighborhood like this yeah so um uh, as you know, there's not municipal pickup here, so it's just like it's everywhere else uh, in the city. Uh, people either contract privately or they uh, um, uh, take it themselves, which is kind of a mix in the neighborhood. One thing, until this point, we have been able to have street uh, porch mail delivery, um, but the, the um, postmaster has, uh, you know, when Frank was there, we were able to get one more. When he was the postman, we just kind of snuck it in. But Frank's retired, so we're going to have to have uh, mailboxes on the street, which I hate. It's like the worst thing to do in a new, new urbanist neighborhood is to introduce this thing. And it's quicker if they just walk to the houses, but can't do anything about it. Terry, go ahead. Just following up about the trash, is the driveway satisfactory for the Uso trucks? No. So people would drag the containers out to the front? We really want to control the size of that driveway so that we don't get truck deliveries back there um, and uh, tear up the edges. And, and uh, it's really meant to be a place to play. It's for the people who live there. So I guess that's a sort of philosophical thing. But Moving trucks, that sort of thing. <clears throat> yeah, just having trucks banging around there at 4 in the morning. Any other concerns, comments? I, I think I saw in the, uh, the representations of the different kinds of houses that the mechanicals, like the air conditioning units, are on the side of houses. There was a note that they'd be protected by shrubs, but they wouldn't be planned for the front of these units. No. no. They're, on the, they're on the east and west side. Each of the buildings has three uh, outdoor air source heat pump locations. And so they have to have a certain distance from the building and elevation off the ground and clearance around them and so on. So. Okay. Any other comments, concerns, questions? Is there a motion to close the public comment? So move we close the public discussion. Okay. Say the comments. Yes. One last question yes. before they leave here. One last yes. question. <laughs> tell me, uh, tell me again about the driveways for the uh, the co-housing. The, the co-housing is moving their driveway, so they're not straight across from yours. No, we we our driveway essentially is an opposite from it. That, that's they're not moving it. That, that's all. The co-housing right. driveway is as currently approved. The TCB project is currently approved. That's just a background for us. We sh we're showing that our driveway is approximately opposite of that, which is a smart traffic perspective. Okay. So they get all the headlights. Right. Well, again, happen, there are traffic and traffic, so there's no, it's from headlights and cross traffic, same thing. We've, we've modeled this actually uh, for our other customers, and there is no headlight impact into living space uh, anywhere here as a result of this traffic, and that's important. Even the, the picket fence on the left-hand side is going to seal 
those coming into the road when you come in your driveway yes it's high enough so that they don't go into those abutters right on the left hand side the new driveway yes there's a couple of butters on the left and uh the lights the car lights don't sign into their homes the the common drive begins to make its arc to the right yep uh before it's it uh, impacts uh doug and and uh, those folks okay. whose name i can't remember now yeah. We have a motion on the table to close the public comment. I'll second. It's already seconded, but we oh. will take the vote. Right, no, here. Right. All those in favor? <laughs> Anyone opposed? Uh, again, there are no concerns or comments from staff other than the DPW comments. So if we were to make a motion, we would incorporate the DPW comments into an approval. Uh, are there additional conditions that we would want to see? Those nine trees need to be identified. So one of the DPW comments was an updated tree um, detail. Right? That was a uh, uh, protection detail, but I think that makes sense to just add that it, um, the final plans need to have the nine proposed trees to be located on the, on the site, okay. along with the details um, for the thermoplastic, granite curb, um, you know, tree protection as we talked about, the dry wells, um, the four inch thickness for the concrete walks um, and the, and um, and then to that all existing granite curb removed for salvage and not reuse should be returned to DPW so that would be an additional so all of those conditions mm -hmm. so is there a motion yeah motion to approve the site plan right Builders Inc. Five single family homes at Fort Crossing, Northampton. Map IDS 31C 76 80. Is there a second? With the conditions, that will be conditions. Yes. Second. Jana, second. All those in favor? Anyone opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. <laughs> we do have additional business, so if you'd like to have conversations, we ask that you do that outside. Timber. 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 <laughs> All I can offer you is a, a mint. Affordable. You want a mint? Housing and right builders. I'll take a mint. Take a mint. You know, city council is well, very no, no, no. definitely new We got to go through some oh, zoning codes. Sorry, Mark. Oh, I. Oh, did you? No. I was not sure, my friend. I was not sure. Do you want to keep that thing? I do. I want to keep that little pack. <laughs> I. So, our other business is the continuation of the form based. <laughs> <laughs> Four base co discussion for downtown. <laughs> You're on camera. Hello. Smile. <laughs> For that A and R. <laughs> the very last of our business. Just getting set up here. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for your patience. It's past my bedtime. Me too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Knocking him out of the park, Kristen. <laughs> 
I give it a face, but I have to leave it. Except for the night, every other day. In a situation, when the situation like that, we want to just make sure we keep it charged, 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 charged. So our presentation is from Dylan Sussman at Dodson Flinker. Um, we have not seen, I believe, we have not seen what you're going to be presenting. So uh, I might ask that you provide us with a summary and then, um, you know, we'll be able to continue this discussion, you know, when we have time to sort of take it all in and yeah. et cetera. And, and pay attention. And pay attention, et cetera, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so how much time do you, um, do you all want to spend before you go home? No one ever asks us that. <laughs> uh, <coughs> well, also, I mean, I suppose, also, it, you know, I suppose it depends on how much information you have to share. But, you know, I think, awesome. I think if you stick to the high level kind of key points so that we can focus on, on what we need to look at here, mm -hmm. that would be useful for us. Um, okay. You know, we do have two other small pieces of business after this discussion, so. All right. All right, so yeah, I wanted to introduce so you. So didn't answer the question. I didn't. I'm letting you use your discretion. Hour, two hours. No, <laughs> no. 45 minutes. The debate has 30. begun. I have, I have to have my kids in the daycare, so. <laughs> Do you have more handouts? Look, looks like we've run out. You've run out? There should have been they stopped oh, at somebody's you. desk. George! The best is George. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to introduce you to the intent and the pro an idea for proposed changes to the zoning map for um, for downtown. Um, this is the um, project started looking at a form based code for the central business district. Um, it's expanded a little bit as we looked at the um, surrounding neighborhoods and seen sort of opportunities for improvements there as well. Um, so the key questions for tonight are, do the proposed district and sub-district boundaries make sense? And do the statements of intent and desired character capture the vision that um, sub-districts? Um, so district, sub-districts, a little squishy term there. Basically, the idea is that there's going to be one central business district, but it will have sub-districts to capture different kind of aspects of um, what we're trying to do. So project area is basically <coughs> includes the, the central business district currently, goes up King Street to what's currently entrance, entranceway business district and down um, to below the intersection of Collins and Pleasant Street. Um, we've done a bunch of public input over the past year. We had a focus group with the Downtown Northampton Association and the Chamber of Commerce, public forum in October. Um, we met with the CBAC a couple of weeks ago and we've done some stakeholder interviews so summarizing what we heard, basically, the downtown core, um, which is essentially Main Street, Pleasant Street, King Street, um, people love that part of town. They really think it's an asset for the town. Um, they love the architecture, they love the wide sidewalks, the benches, the street life in Pulaski Park. They're concerned about bike safety, um, panhandling, other signs of social distress lack of maintenance of the public infrastructure, housing affordability, and um, a big concern with how to maintain the vibrancy of downtown as retail shrinks um, and their changes in the economy. So the design directions that we, we drew from the public input was we need to improve the public realm, right? Public realm, in my lingo, is everything between basically one building face across the street to the other building face. So it's the street right of way, it's, it's our space, our, us as the people, the public, as opposed to the private realm, which is private development. Um, so, you know, that's been sort of one of Northampton's competitive edges, is that we've got a great street environment. Um, and over the years, other downtowns have caught up and built um, nice, appealing places as well. Um, so there's a need to maintain that competitive edge and to make sure that that public realm is suitable for all the users of Northampton. Um, and so one of the key directions for the zoning is to make sure that there are standards for that, that public realm, um, particularly interface between private development and public development. Um, 
So maintaining the integrity of the Main Street architecture is important. Balancing of um, history with other values like energy efficiency and affordable housing. Um, and then making the CBAC process more predictable. Um, people talked about side streets. Um, and we also have done a bunch of field work throughout this process to try and document downtown built environment. Um, so there's opportunities for redevelopment here. There's a mix of building types and uses. It's much more diverse than Main Street, right, which has one, basically one building type, one historic commercial building type. It's masonry, it's got a shop front, it's three to four stories, predominantly. Um, proximity to Main Street uh, is, a, uh, is a benefit for this area, as well as lower traffic volumes. Um, concerns are the narrow sidewalks, limited bike facilities. Um, so again, like, like the downtown core, one of the key things here is making sure that there's an attractive public realm, that there are street trees, that the sidewalks are adequate, um, that the interface between buildings and the sidewalk is appealing. Um, and encouraging building types that are appropriate while again recognizing that maybe not all of them are gonna have retail frontage. Um, so, and, and streamlining the central <laughs> review. So currently the way the CBAC, this, the Central Business Architecture Committee works is they sort of have a rule of thumb that they're more strict on Main Street and they're a little bit more flexible on the side streets and on places that are not visible from the public way. Um, but, but it's a rule of thumb and I think we got some input that it would be nice if that was a little bit more explicit. Can, can I ask a quick question? Yes. Um, so as we look forward to this kind of a manual or guidelines down the road of this form-based zoning, are these some of the images that people would see, developers would see, or are those some of the images that they might see as examples or are? Yeah, those are some of the images, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, these are just existing conditions to, so you know what I'm talking so, about. So, okay, all right, great, thanks. Um, so Lower Pleasant Street and Lower King Street are you know, seen as big redevelopment opportunities. There are some large parcels there that have a lot of pavement, not a lot of buildings. They've got high traffic volumes. They're close to downtown on the bike path. Um, there have been recent and planned street improvements. Um, but there was a lot of public input about the unattractive and consistent buildings and site designs. Um, site designs not pedestrian friendly. Um, and people seem to want to have basically clear and predictable zoning for these areas. They seem to have more interest or at least acceptance of contemporary buildings for these areas. Um, but still making sure that kind of the basic urban design, the basic architectural design is appropriate. Um, and that there should be, zoning should take into consideration that there'll be larger developments and that we should plan for larger developments there. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Holly Street because through the process, I think um, it's a reason that it would, might make sense to expand in down Holly Street. So the Central Business District currently goes down Holly Street um, to the Holly Place, and then it goes into URC, and then it's OI below Hancock Street. Um, it seems like a lot of what we've been working on for the form-based code for downtown would also work pretty well on Holly Street. So especially the southern part of Holly Street where it's the OI district, you've got shoe fix, um, big empty parking lot, gravel pat, gra gravel lot there, and then a one-story sort of strip commercial building below that. Seems like it has some potential for redevelopment. Um, concerns or lack of pedestrian and bike connections to downtown. Anybody who's done any talking to anybody in Ward 3 has probably heard that before, right? The train tracks cut off Ward 3 from, or the east part of Ward 3 from downtown. It's a pretty intractable problem. Um, parking spillover from downtown is a concern and establishing an appropriate transition from sort of the, the downtown core that's on the west side of the railroad tracks to the residential neighborhoods to the east side of Holly Street. Um, so this is the existing zoning map. Colors are probably different from what you're used to seeing because 
I made it. So I made the colors that made sense to me. All right, so you have um, this, this red area is Central Business District. The pink is Entranceway Business District. It runs from Summer Street up to where the bike path crosses along King Street. Um, that's the old Honda site there. Um, down at the southern end, this is General Business District. It runs from Holyoke Street down to past the intersection with Cons. Past so the roundabout. What is the marijuana, marijuana uh, store? Uh, right here on Fulton Avenue. Right. Up there. So this is General Business District. Um, and then, as I said before, it's the OI District here on Holly Street. There's a little bit of OI District in the middle, which is probably Ralph's um, Blacksmith. Um, and then there's some patches of Neighborhood Business District, which um, include like Murphy's Realty and the VF, it's not the VFW, it's the World War II Club. Sorry, I'm in Florence. Um, and then there are a couple of parcels here that I'm picking up because they're URC, but in our proposed changes, they would turn into something else. Um, so a small patch of URC here. Over here is um, public housing. And this is um, a former school on Old South Street. And this is city-owned property that's um, protected open space. That's Veterans Field. And then um, I assume the former Battle of the Mill River. So the proposed zoning, um, or sorry, this is existing just same as that map. Sorry, what is that goldenrod piece? Oh, that just turned to green? Yeah. Goldenrod piece? That's Veterans Field. Uh -huh. So it's the only park area within <coughs> this downtown business area in the it's central business core. It's the largest. The Pulaski Park. The Pulaski Park. Pulaski Park. Uh, excuse me, That's, I didn't see it on the map. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. 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 It's kind of brown. It's like. <laughs> no. So one of the yeah. things we're, we're proposing in the map is that we actually call out parks, streetscape, and public land as a category in the zoning map. Um, there may or may not be standards associated with that, but I think it's useful to sort of get your head around the neighborhood in general to, to call out those protected open spaces. So. That's part of the reason for, for bringing in some of those areas that are not currently central business district or um, or other business districts. So you've got you know Veterans Field, Pulaski Park, the bike path, Agnes Fox Park up here off of State Street, um, and then a couple other small city owned um, public spaces in there. So the uh, the idea is essentially to take the Central, what's currently the central business district, and split that into two districts or two sub districts. One of them we're calling Central Business Core, and the other is Central Business Side Street. Those names may change. They're probably not the best names, but they're the best we can come up with for right now. Um, and the the reason for doing that is because the the character of those areas is pretty different, and I think the desired character of those is probably slightly different. Um, the central business core area is kind of the, the historic core of, of downtown Northampton that has those, you know, 19th and early 20th century commercial buildings. They're predominantly brick, like I said. They have shop fronts. I built um, Main Street. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Main so, Street. so running along Main Street in this brighter pink here, um, King Street up to Trumbull Road, Pleasant Street down to Holyoke. Um, then down Crafts Avenue, um, along Center Street to Masonic, the east side of Masonic, and then the west side of Masonic about halfway down the block, um, and then the church property on the corner of Elm Street, as well as continuing down South Street where you have um, the Academy of Music and um, the old school commons, I believe it's called. Yeah. So those are the areas that are like I said, they're this, this kind of historic core of Northampton, the historic architectural core. They're a mix of commercial structures and kind of landmark public institutions like the Academy of Music and the various churches. <coughs> the side streets are more diverse in their building types. Um, they're a lot of the what, what the central business design guidelines call transitional residential buildings. So they're built as houses, and they've been converted to commercial use. Um, 
So those are those two districts, and then the entranceway business district would be changed to something called Central Business Gateway. Um, it would do the same as what's <coughs> general business down at the bottom, um, and those would have the same standards. <coughs> and the Central Business Gateway would expand to pick up some of the <coughs> neighborhood business and OI areas. Um, Somebody's not happy. So those are the general map changes. <clears throat> Dylan, uh, yes. how do you, uh, how do we manage, or not manage, but how do we label um, Smith College and those in that area in this classification? Is it in that central business area? I'm not quite sure I can. Yeah, the only, the only part of Smith College that's in this is um, the parking garage. I think the whole, the, the, pre, the president building, there's brick buildings, they are in that big area there. Oh no, that's a library. Yeah. So this is, yeah, this that's is a library. library. Yeah. Okay. So they're outside of it. So they're outside of it. So Smith is out of it. Yeah. Was there any consideration to looking at Bridge Street in terms of that gateway? Yeah, it's the district is. Um, so I guess you guys recently expanded Central Business District along Bridge Street a little bit, um, and then. I think that's as far as, yeah, that's as far as, as it goes on that end. We didn't, we didn't expand it there. A few more businesses going out. Um, yeah, the central business, I believe, currently incorporates those. So it, um, no, I'm thinking in terms of the gateway uh -huh. designation. We've had some discussions in the past about do we want to include a portion of the fairgrounds, but we haven't gone anywhere, and there's okay. sort of not an expansion of those. So okay. It seems like there's one here. All right. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the character of the, the north and south gateways is very different from the Bridge Street gateway, right? The Bridge Street, you come in, it's basically residential, 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 and then you hit Talbot's in the post office, um, and, they go and the then it's a very fast transition. And you know, there's a little sprinkling all the way out, right? All the going way out as far as the car wash. <clears throat> yeah, sprinkling. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know what the city's planning intent is for those areas. I guess I'd say it's beyond the scope of this project. Um, <clears throat> that's a good point. It could become kind of like Route Nine Hadley. All those homes could transition to kind of. Business opportunities. Well, right the other way, about 12 years ago, there were some business districts out there which we down zoned uh -huh. to residential, saying we didn't want it to be a Route 9. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so this, this is the central business core. Um, do you guys have any questions about just what that map is showing? If not, I'm going to go into reading what the intent statement and the desired character. Which it's going to be exciting. <laughs> we have that in front of us, yes? Yes. I don't think we need to read it. <coughs> What's that? Do we need to read it? I mean, I think if It's right here in front of us? Yeah. I mean, we have it. Um, I think if our goal is to continue having this discussion yeah. at a later date, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean what sort of our like requirement now? What, like, what's the expectation that we accomplish tonight? It, it's really up to you all. Um, the idea was to sort of present, um, you know, you did the Florence one two weeks ago, and then this one is to um, lay out sort of the foundation for how we might think about doing this um, form-based code and this sub-districts. And, but I think um, it would be important to sort of understand the concept of creating the sub-districts in terms of what that would mean about the different regulatory structure for each one. So um, what standards would apply based on those, either the core district or the gateway or um, the um, side street mm -hmm. for temporary um, labeling purposes. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that it makes sense to sort of um, get that summary of sort of what these are because you definitely want to take some 
more time to right. really focus on what that means right. on a, and really dive down into block by block thinking about that. And I don't know, given the hour now, that it makes right. sense to dive into that. Right. No. Um, but it certainly um, is a setup, I think, for what you sh what we should plan to be doing um, at at subsequent meetings. And at, at subsequent meetings, do we are we are we going to? parse it out so okay tonight we're going to talk about entranceway business and, and, and then only and then next time it's you know cb well, core and then or i how is there a structure or a, a logic or thinking of how we're going to march through this yeah, I'm, i mean i would think the next meeting you would probably want to go through and start to understand how the code is going to work and what the standards are um and what the, it has a lot of a lot of dissection of parts of the built environment that are then the standards are attached to. So going through that and understanding that I think would be the next step. Yeah. Okay. And you could do it by sub-district, but you'd want to, we'd want to make sure we're not, um, we understand how it relates to the one that, right. you know, yeah. you just discussed if right. it were a previous right. meeting so that it's not completely out of context. Um, so, you know, we could start by district and then sort of at the end of that discussion, um, tie that into what the next meeting's discussion is going to be about the next district so that <coughs> you understand, you know, why there's a line drawn there. And right. um, and in terms of the, the overall framework, like this is already accepted and adopted? No. Or, okay. No. That's no. your no. Uh, preview. Not, kind yeah, of. I'm not sold yet on the, the sub-districts at all. And so, like, I would love for us to have a chance to discuss yeah. that. Um, no, the idea was sort of to bring it to the board, another sort of gather more information about this framework after all the work that they did and um, determine, you know, if the, one, if the dis sub districts make sense, two, what are those regulating elements and um, are there things that we need to add, subtract, subtract. Mm -hmm. and then, I mean, and, and then they'll have to be more public. Um, right. input to it and then at some point it'll be formally introduced okay. as an ordinance change <coughs> okay. would you go back a couple of slides to the existing kind of zone um, yeah so at some point all the OI the NB the URB we won't be using that terminology anymore well, if we decide yeah, if to we, go in, right so if you all right, right it, it makes sense if more the zone so it makes it. sense yeah. Yeah. If the zoning gets adopted, which is, you know, it's a long, uh -huh. long right. way from there. Uh -huh. In the, this area, those pieces would then be rezoned right. to whatever the label is that we decide is appropriate. And then we would find this consensus of the standards that meet CB Core and CB yeah. Side Street that involve some of the standards that are currently in URB and OI, correct? Um, probably not. Uh -huh. It's a whole new thing. So the idea is to create a code that's self-contained, basically, and addresses how, what the vision is for the redevelopment of those areas. So we're not necessarily taking elements of URB and the other district. We're really sort of, um, really taking as the framework the central business architecture guidelines uh -huh. and figuring out what parts of those need mm -hmm. to be modified for those side huh. streets and, and um, entryway areas. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, the, the zoning code has been in transition over, I mean, it's always yeah. in transition, but it's been in transition particularly probably over the last 10 years, right? Where... Um, it's a living, breathing document. Yeah. That's why we love it. The way, that sent, the way that the current zoning is, you all know this, I don't have to tell you, you work with it all the time. The way the Central Business District is currently organized is kind of a different from like um, you are from RR or SR, right? And OI is kind of halfway in between and NB is like more traditional zoning. So basically it's taking central business is more form based already. It's taking that to the next level and then kind of pulling some of these other districts into that approach. Um, behind. Okay, so the Central Business District, the intent here is basically to keep Northampton, Northampton, and make it better. Right? It's the premier walkable destination in Western Massachusetts, and the goal is to continue that um, and to build on its strengths. And the strengths are it's got great sidewalks, it's got street, great street life, and it's got great architecture. So it's basically a preservation district. Um, 
And as part of that, I think this, the idea is that the central business district guidelines would stay in full force in this area. Um, and then the form-based code elements would be in addition to that. Um, the goals are probably, like from a design perspective, it's probably still having buildings that are built right up to the sidewalk, buildings that are, any new buildings will be attached or very close to each other, um, encouraging taller buildings um, where possible. Um, so that's, that's the central business core. Basically, keep it as it is and make it better. Um, the central business side street uh, is a little bit more tricky in a way because it doesn't have those wide sidewalks already. So if there's going to be street life in this area, some of it's going to have to happen on private property. Um, you see that already at places like um, the, the sister restaurant to Amenu's Mosaic. So Mosaic's Mosaic, got a little yeah. seating terrace, right? It's on private property, but it still contributes to street life or... Um, well, Silver and Coffee has that, a little bit of a patio um, that's in their parking lot. Um, um, so, so there might be a little bit more flexibility in terms of buildings being built to the edge of the sidewalk. So a little more front setback allowed as long as it's a really public active use. So in form-based codes, we talk about frontage types. Frontage types are the use of basically the front setback as well as the front facade of the building. Um, so there'd be more flexibility of frontage types, whereas on, on Main Street, your frontage type might basically just be the building is built to the edge of the sidewalk or set back a little bit, but the difference between the public sidewalk and a private sidewalk is invisible, as it is currently on Main Street in places like in front of Fitzwillies, um, where there's probably a private sidewalk there, but you don't know it. Um, so there'd be more flexibility in terms of frontage types. There'd be more flexibility as well in terms of, um, of building types. Um, I think we've had some discussions about whether it would make sense to take the central business design guidelines and have them be design standards but reviewed by the planning board as opposed to the central business architecture committee. Um, the thinking behind that is basically that we want to incentivize redevelopment of this area. It fits with not, not wholesale, like demolish it all, but slow redevelopment in the sort of like underutilized parcels. Um, so we want to incentivize that. It fits with Northampton's sustainability goals. We want to concentrate development there. So it's not sprawling elsewhere. It's walkable so people can um, have less car trips and be contributing to global warming less. Um, but we don't know to what degree those the extra hurdle of going through the Central Business Architecture Committee is, is slowing redevelopment. Um, and it seems like it's possible you could get most of what you want without that extra committee. Um, the other main difference between those two, cor those two districts, I think, is that I think there's a strong goal of having basically no new curb cuts and closing as many curb cuts as possible in the core district. Um, I think there'd be slightly more flexibility in terms of curb cuts in the side district, side street district. Um, although again, I don't think anybody wants more curb cuts, but um, maybe just not quite as strong. So I'm not going to read this because it sounds like you guys will, and we'll talk about it later. Um, the gateway district. Um Yes. Could you just explain our diagram here a little bit. You have A, B, and A, B. Yeah. These are setbacks, buildings that. Sure, yeah. So this is a, it's a placeholder for now. Um, and the A is, it, it's taken from part of the code and it doesn't apply here. So. Okay. So we'll dive into that, those yeah. code elements, and then you'll see how that. Okay. What A and B <laughs> So this a teaser. Yeah. Okay. This image was custom, you know, it was made for this district and this one was made for this district, but the side the idea of having a side street is more recent and we just haven't made the image okay. for it yet. Fine. Um so the gateway district, like I said earlier, it seems like people have more tolerance for contemporary architecture here, so that that um it seems like wouldn't make sense to apply most of the central business design guidelines to this area. Um, 
but it will it have form-based standards that set basic urban and architectural design standards. Um, more flexibility in frontage types and building types than the side street areas. Um, uh, currently, the general business districts requires ground floor commercial, flat, right, just ground floor commercial. Central business requires ground floor commercial be um, in the first 20 feet of building depth. Um, so you can have residential as long as you have a, a commercial liner. Um, so I, I think that might be something that's worth exploring changing in, this, in the gateway areas. Um, and I think that one of the key questions here will be whether it's appropriate to allow residential on the first floor, and if so, what the criteria for that would be, or whether you want to maintain it as something that has commercial frontage all the way, you know, all the way down to the ends there. Um, <coughs> and that's about it. That's what I got for you. Do you guys have any questions? <coughs> oh, okay. I have a question. The, the historic one district, right? I see that the ch that church that used to be under construction, that, uh, mm -hmm. and the other church, uh, yeah, you see the yeah, the old school go all the way down, 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 no, all the way down, all the way, in. yeah, Same to your right, yeah, to your right. Same areas. Same areas. Yeah. yeah, that church, and uh, then you have the other little church that's been there to be developed forever. Baptist church. Yeah, so. Should they think, how do you think about that thing? Because it isn't there closed, right? How do you integrate that in the whole historic district thing? Because uh, are they selling, are they turning You recommended off? demolition of both those buildings, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, not the church. The little one, yes. She's kidding. She's kidding. <laughs> no, the other church is nice. I didn't move yeah, for no. the... Uh, no demolition. Yeah, I mean, I think that they, well, the buildings themselves totally fit, right? So yeah, Mark Hampton has a big developer of that little one, the Baptist Church, is doing nothing. Which one is the Baptist Church? The, the one little one. Boarded up. It doesn't, doesn't have, have any stairs eye. anymore. Yeah, it's been there forever. Next it's an eyesore. Yeah. Yeah. Next to the library, kind, uh -huh. of, kind of towards that. Mm -hmm. I was just curious about that, how, if you thought about those two buildings, churches, mm -hmm. because they are dead and... Uh, what do you have to them? I mean, unfortunately, our zoning can't do anything about no. Just about them it because <laughs> they came out of that whole district thing. Different stories. I mean, the Baptist Church is an Eric Shore project. Yeah. And it, it makes sense. The Catholic Church, St. Mary's, is partially that they're charging too much for the property, but partially it's the white elephant. It, you know, I think the Catholic Church folks are going to sit there for another ten years and decay, and then someone's going to tear it down. Yeah, that's if you want to go in on it, I'll buy it. <laughs> I would buy it too. <laughs> we have enough money. <laughs> a big party over there. But yeah. well, thank you so much. This is this is helpful. So yeah. we'll continue the discussion at the July meeting, at yeah, the August meeting, or um, you could. You know, there are no permits scheduled for July 11th, so you could just have um, a more detailed discussion. Okay. Jana can't, but um, we could do that. Um, because the agenda I mean, it would be nice if we didn't have permits on the agenda. Right. We could just have a discussion. Yeah. And that sounds very nice. Yeah? Okay. So that'll be our next. Yes, Terry. This is um, actually just a follow up about Bridge Street. Yeah. Is that somewhere on the horizon? Uh, some thought about what we should be thinking about Bridge Street? So the. Really, the main area we talked about it was the fairgrounds. They were in expansion mode until mm -hmm. five or six years ago, and they stopped doing anything. I think we feel like there's capacity for one more hotel downtown, and so that's one of the areas we brainstormed. You know, there's le we're trying to get legislation so that the old probate court is now closed. Mm -hmm. We're working with the state to get legislation which would transfer that, the, the responsibility to sell the property to the city. And so that's sort of crown jewel downtown. So I think until we know what happened, that could be a hotel, it could be something yeah. different. So probably not at least till we know what happens with yeah. the probate building. Almost certainly, Richard probably comes down 
So right. it's the biggest development pad we've had downtown in decades. So the existing businesses are grandfathered and right. just don't just leave it like that. But the, but the other thing that we've talked about is potentially after doing the form based code for downtown and Florence Center is does it make sense to create some kind of um, coding for the residential districts? Mm -hmm. So it could include, um, you know, maybe we would tack U URC next or something, and that would incorporate, that's part of, you You know, Bridge Street is starts in URC and then goes to URB. But we'd probably look at, you know, corridors in that context with um, in terms of form-based code. I think that's probably the only next step that we've yeah. talked about doing. So you have to, you want to keep in the back of your mind sort of helping us think about the next area. So we, we had planned originally to do central business first, both for its own sake, but also as a pilot for form-based code. And then sort of just because of perks of money coming in, then we got the money to do Florence, and so we're doing Florence simultaneously, which is mm -hmm. an ideal. And then we got money to do, to look at the potential for two families everywhere in the city as sort of a form-based code approach, right? If you do a good design, does that make sense? So those are sort of queued up. Right. You know, we're still a year from those being finished, but I think we'd like to expand the next area. And there's sort of two approaches we've talked about. One is other business districts, which would be the easiest politically, like if you make King Street form-based code, no one's going to really object. But it also might be the least benefit. Or going to the neighborhood, which would have enormous benefit, but would be sort of a third rail. Like anything, you, you open up those things. <laughs> so think of those in the back of mind, the bridge should become part of that conversation. Yeah, I mean, a residential property fronting on Bridge Street being run as a small business has one feeling going down a side street would be entirely a different. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, so we'll pick this up again July 11th yep. at 7 p.m. Well, we don't have to do a time, but yes, we don't have anything oh, else, yeah, so okay. <laughs> it would be seven. No other adjustments in time unless you guys <laughs> want to go earlier. Yes. Or... Just a real quick question, yeah. I mean, if you can jump in too. Um, so specifically to central business in the form-based code, is it is it building specific or is the are the public ways part of this conversation only because in 15 years I've been here, I've seen so many presentations on Main Street. You know, Main Street is bigger than it than it needs to be. So does that mean we make the sidewalks bigger, or does that mean we put an island up the gut, or we put parking down the middle, or we, and all these different right. presentations? So is all that going to be? So two things, they get to talk to each other, but you only control one of them. So what we're working on from a zoning standpoint is what do private parties do? And in essence, you, you tend, if someone's building a new building or redoing a major rehab, you tend to make them rebuild up to the curb. And so that's really what you're dealing with. I keep giving the example of Shaw's Motel, where you sort of did a somewhat ad hoc, you did a great approach, you did an ad hoc approach, we didn't have a set standard. Yeah. Right. There wasn't wide enough for as wide sidewalks, as many big tree belts as we'd like, and so we're trying to do that. Zoning's not gonna regulate what the city does for the right of way, so. I know it's not gonna regulate, but I'm wondering if, are, are they, if, if the city has a master plan to put an island right down the middle of Main Street, and, 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 the, and the, that master plan is not running tangential with what we're talking about. Right. Is, there, is there coordination? Yes, there's yes. coordination. There are separate processes. So we, we just signed, actually we signed tomorrow, um, uh, I think it's an $800,000 design contract with Tool Design to redo all of Main Street. Mm -hmm. So it's really just the beginning stages of that process. It's probably six years or seven years before it goes to construction. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the further you get, the harder it's changed. But yes, so this will be going on simultaneously okay. that the two processes. It's not cross-purposes. Yeah. yeah, and what's okay. the zoning is suggestive to the city and basically is, it's not binding, but right. to the extent that the administration of the city is behind it, then the, things are, then the two things are pushing in the same direction. Terrific, thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks, Don. We have one ANR. No, no. Oof. We have. We don't have it. We have three A and R. Oh, three A. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then. I know. I said, yeah, yeah. One of them I have to do digitally because I threw it in this pile and I can't find it. So we'll do the the paper copy one first. 
Uh, so this one, they're all pretty straightforward. This one is um, at the end of Grove Avenue. There's just a little swap of land. These are two parcels that were already created, and they're just swapping triangles to sort of even out the property line based on where the house was sited. Mm -hmm. So it's not creating a lot at all. I up in lead. You guys want to see some exciting houses off the Grove Avenue at the end of <laughs> Is there a motion to endorse? Anna so moved. Bev? Second. Alan, Mark, all those in favor? Yes. You want to post? No. Okay, so um, the next one is, um, this one is on Fair Street Extension. Mm -hmm. And they're, they want to carve off a five acres. This is special conservancy. So new building lots require 40,000, I'm sorry, um, 40 acres in the special conservancy. Um, they want to create a division line here so they can sell off a farm parcel. So this one will need to be stamped that it's not a building lot because it's in the special conservancy. Um, but because they're changing the lot lines, um, it has to go through this process. So, um, you know, it would be endorsed as not, um, as not a building not a lot, lot, actually. Yeah. Okay. That's the floodplain, special yes. conservancy, basically. Yes. <clears throat> yep. Is there a motion to endorse? So moved. Mark, second. Krista, all those in favor? Yep. Anyone opposed? Okay. Next. So the third one is, uh, I think I pulled it up here on, um, I pulled up the wrong one, hold on. It's on Rocky Hill Road, and it's to correct a trespass. Um, a property owner has a pool that extends into the abutting lot, and so the, the lot owner is selling back a little wedge um, to make the pool conform. Um, wow. So. <laughs> Love the pool. <laughs> yeah, the pool. Yeah. So it's like nobody knows it, huh? Thanks, Dylan. <laughs> Come again. So is let's it new see. Pool construction or no, it's been there. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, so this is, I don't know if you can see that. Mm -hmm. There's a little um, triangle there being cut out of that lot. So again, not a new mm -hmm. lot being developed, but oh, I see. Little, oh. yeah, <laughs> to wrap around the pool. Wow. Wow. Motion to endorse? Yeah. Motion. Siri? Second. Second from George. All those in favor? Yes. Anyone opposed? Okay, so tell me those. George? Uh, oh, Yuri, Yuri and George? Nope. No, Yuri nope. and Terry was the second. Okay, then unanimous. Okay. And then 15 okay. years from now, they're going to fill in that pool <laughs> and they're going to come back to us to straighten out <laughs> that line. <laughs> right. Job security. And then we have one more. Uh, and then, people. yeah, so the uh, Northview subdivision, which is um, PCOY's project that's um, Higgins Way mm -hmm. is the little loop. They're, they came in, we, you, we, you just did a reduction a couple weeks ago, but that had been sort of pending for months and months. So by the time that one went through, they were already ready oh to request another one. DPW was fine with this reduction. So they're asking for a reduction from $253,022.74 to be reduced to $208,681.99. They still have two lots. Um, under covenant as well, mm -hmm. lot sale covenant. So um, they, the board needs to approve the reduction. But basically, when they, when someone, when the applicant asks, um, they have to provide exactly how much value is left in the construction, what mm -hmm. they've done, and what the cost of those items that are left to do, so um, that we can review them. And DPW had no concerns. Right. They agree, they agree with these numbers. Oh, great. So move. Second. Yeah. Yuri, all those in favor? Yeah. Anyone opposed? No. Okay. Can't vote for all of us. Oh, wait, and then minutes. Did you guys read the minutes? There are minutes yep. from no. June 13. Yep. Any questions I or edits? Move to approve. Is there a second? Yes. Yuri, all those in favor? Yes. I'm going to abstain because I wasn't at that meeting, so. 
Huh? You can still vote to accept. We felt that you are here for some reason. I trust everyone else. We felt that you are present. I wasn't present. But we felt that okay. you felt it? Yeah. That's all I have. Is there a motion to adjourn? Yes. Yuri, a second? Second. Terry, all those in favor? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, do you want to have discussion about <laughs>